Hello, I'm Kansas. Very nice to meet you all uh, with the People Power Battery Collective and look forward to working forward and learning together with you guys in the, the coming sessions. Uh, peace, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we are People Power and we are the Battery Collective spinoff of People Power. Uh, my name is Yasir and I'm working with uh, Kansas. And also I'll be introducing Crystal as well. Um, so I actually can introduce her now, Crystal. Hi everyone. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're so excited to be learning with you all here. We're about to embark on a journey together to try to figure out how we can build a battery backup emergency battery in your community. Because we know that just from remember back in COVID times when the, the the toilet paper was out when people were hoarding toilet papers we don't have to be hoarding batteries we can be sharing these things especially when these things cost thousands of dollars can communities do it all together knowing that a lot of times power shut off don't happen for everyone all at once we're very very excited to be sharing what we learned here uh, with you and learning with you all together and here are the objectives Peace, y'all. So yeah, just we just wanted to establish, first off, just thank you all for all showing up. It's amazing. Showing up and being present is the first step to really engaging with community and even learning. Um, so really appreciate that. You guys are going to be learning and uh, hopefully engaging with uh, in this course here. So we just put out three real quick. And these are just summaries, but we hope that you guys, you know, uh, at the end of the series can be activated to set up your own backup mm -hmm. powder uh, collective supply. So uh, by the end of it, hopefully you have enough knowledge and enough uh, support from both this community and your own local community to start getting those uh, systems in place. Additionally, we want to be able to get you be able to be organized and host community meetings to talk about the issues that are happening in your community so that you have uh, build resilience and connections that really matter for when things in your community uh, happen. And as we heard from everyone. Everyone's in their own unique community in their own unique place and time. And your requirements, your needs of your community, and even the abilities of your community, right, um, all are dependent on where you are. So hopefully by the end of this, you will feel empowered enough to be uh, able to feel like you can hold meetings in your community geared towards what you think is important, supporting the communities and the people you see uh, are important. The last point here is uh, you would be able to make uh, connections on how to use all of these things you've learned, these tools, these communities, um, and how to organize them to effectively share resources. So we'll be focusing on backup batteries and you know battery supplies, but that doesn't mean that these learnings can't apply to any type of resource that could be shared, whether it would be food, water, um, or any type of thing. A lot of the objectives of this is to try to help us break our boundaries and our understanding of our con trained models to help us realize that we are powerful and that we can come up with creative solutions. If you are interested in kind of hearing a little bit deeper uh, information about the experience that of the folks in o in Oakland and how they started the the first battery collective that we're modeling off of, we did an episode of the Response Podcast, which is a podcast that Shareable does, which focuses on how communities are building collective resilience in the wake of disasters. And uh, there's a link to an hour long conversation that really kind of previews um, the the why. And, and kind of the initial steps of getting off the ground. So would invite folks to, to listen into that as well. I think a, a large part of, part of our instruction and in our coursework is based off of community um, and just understanding, you know, that bridge between environmental justice and community justice and how they're both the exact same thing. Um, and also preparing individuals to learn how to build community, probably so much that you may be like, where the hell is the battery? So we just want to make sure that you understand that, yes, we feel you. And that is definitely our focus here, um, how to how to formulate that community, how to develop that community and how to make that a community that knows how to respond um, and also see down the road for what possibilities may arise that we can prepare for early. All of these resources that we're creating as part of this course are going to be made of free and available. 
for anybody to use and adapt. They'll all be published with a Creative Commons license. I also want to echo, want to echo quick, what um, Kansas has shared about the objective of our course. Since we have a very short period of time, I don't want us to feel like as we're working towards responding to emergency, we don't want to respond to this community care with more urgency because that could create false solution and desperation. So how do we actually create a space to really focus on what is the most important? And for us in our learning experience, we feel like what we really need to prioritize is in the objective that Kansas shared is how do we get you to feel comfortable organizing and hosting community meetings about battery sharing? How do you then make a connection on how to use these tools to organize more shared resources to power mapping? So these should all translate to anywhere you go and anything you want to share with your communities. But what we'll be focusing on is going to be very much around batteries for now, because we do have a very short period of time. We want to make sure we all feel comfortable. From our experience in doing any sort of energy related resources for community sharing, we realized that the biggest barrier is not necessarily the object themselves. It's about how we actually build the community and build the messaging that can bring the resources in. So as you'll, you'll hear in the podcast episode, we'll talk a lot about, as Ro mentioned, like what's, what does community governance look like? collective gun governance and why that matters because ultimately that once we get that locked down we can bring in the resource is not going to be a problem and we really want to be able to spend the next four weeks engaging with you actively to try to like learn together on how we can actually get meet the needs of our community and establish what's like the focus to do so that we can actually start putting in the seeds for energy sharing and then start looking at more resources to come together so then you, you want to build a, a um, battery sharing thing that's going to be powered by solar or going to be big enough to power a, um, at anything you want, then you can do it. So we are not letting these, these um, physical material become the, the barrier for our community needs. Because when we're talking about designing from the future that's based on justice, we're talking about us coming together and deciding for what we want to see. So then we're not letting the engineers and the technical experts design what is possible. We're letting ourselves and our imagination de decide what is possible. And that's what we're, we're hoping for the next four weeks to be. And then when we have follow through in the, the following four weeks, we'll be like trying to understand how your community actually looks like bringing what we've learned over the next four weeks to come together and doctor it together and, like, and problem solve together. Thank you all so much. See you next week. Yeah, super excited. It's going to be so fun. Have a good night. Stay hydrated, everyone. Yeah.